Hell yeah, dude. Welcome back to the Lonely Man's Podcast, fastest growing podcast in the world. Just the boys this week. Myself, Jesse Burlingame, Ben Basanga's here. What up? What's up, doggy? Back again. We are back again, dude. Just just the squad. I kind of like it like that sometimes. I like it when it's just the boys, when it's just us. It's always when you got a guest on here, like, what do you guys talk about? We're like, that's a good question. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, we're like, and then when I tell people, it's like, we just bullshit for an hour. They think I'm being dismissive, and I was like, no, that's just what we do. Yeah, so. literally what we do. We just out here. Yeah. We tell stories. We tried to talk to Kat about Austin last week, and then, I don't know, what did we talk about at the end? Sex work rights? I have no idea. <laughs> Yeah, you know, just wherever the conversation takes us. Weed legalization? No clue. Yeah, sex work is real work. You know, we support that. Um, we just did some uh, some fake work at South by Southwest for nine days. <laughs> this is some real, real nonsense as fake work. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't really know what we got paid to do the whole time. Um, so we did a hospitality driving. We would deliver meals to the South by Southwest staff that were at venues that were kind of out of the way. Because the food was, like, kind of central, I guess. Yeah, which we probably did, like, what, one, two, maybe three of those a night, a day? Towards the end of the festival was our busiest time, and we had three deliveries, like, maybe one at 1 p.m., 5 p.m., and then 8 p.m. There was, it was you, Andres, and myself. Yeah. We would each do, we would each hit one or two venues per run, be in the car for maybe half an hour at most. And then the rest of the day, they did not allow us to walk around the festival. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we could get out for a little bit, but I don't know why they wanted us to be so close. Like, I feel like they were just, they were kind of nervous about, like, they didn't know what they was kind of going on. They're like, what if something happens? Yeah. Like, they were freaking out about it. We something. had three bosses, and I think they each had, like, three bosses or something. I don't know. There's like too many people at South by Southwest. No, everyone's looking for something to do. Yeah, and we yeah we met like we had one boss, and then they had another boss, and then another boss, and I was like, why do you guys got so many levels of bosses here? <laughs> you guys are. And this is like, what is this a video game? We just got different boss levels. Like, yeah, just to serve mac and cheese to people all day. Yeah, like what are we, what are we doing out here? And yeah. the worst part was like. We didn't even, like, put it together or anything like that. We just grabbed them, put them in the car, and drove them. Like, that's all oh, we Oh, the did. meals, yeah. Yeah, the meals. Like, we just put them in the car, and we drove them. Yeah, they in. would put them in to-go boxes into a big box, and then we would just drive the box up to a venue. Someone would walk outside and get it from us. We didn't even have to get out of the van. It was so easy, dude. <laughs> just pressing buttons, opening their doors and shit. Just grab it. Dude. Yeah, once I figured out how to open my van door from the from the inside, I was like, oh, this is cake, bro. <laughs> I'm not even getting out. How many times did you have to yell at somebody like no i got it i got the door they like they're like trying to like no, most of the time i just gave him the box i'd usually be standing outside and hand him the box oh really i did not get out of the van one time yeah i got out of the van a lot i get impatient when people aren't there i'm like all right dude dude i was blocking stuff. traffic on second street when my hazard lights yeah, on. Like, just I'm, giving, I'm just like bro grab the shit I'm, I'm trying to get up out the paint yeah but yeah other than that it was pretty cool the plast was cool to get into shit the platinum badge yeah. yeah it did come in handy a couple times yeah, was I got into the creek in the cave for some of the comedy shows, which as a comedian, I probably could have anyway if I went through like the front door. But uh, it seemed like they were being pretty strict about it the first couple nights. Yeah, I didn't know if comedians were running it or if it was uh, South by Southwest were running it because it was a venue. The staff was like facilitating like most of the entrances and exits over there. And uh, I just scanned my badge to get in the back patio of the creek. But then I just stayed in there. I didn't leave in between shows and get in line again. Yeah. So I, once I was inside, I was like, uh, I just like hid my badge. I was like, I'm a friend of the creek. I'm if anyone yeah, has, yeah, like, yeah. I <laughs> work here. Friend of the show. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a frequenter of the creek. So that was fun. I got to see Tim Dillon drop in for a 20 minute spot Saturday night. Got to watch uh, two out of the three roast battle tournaments. Which were, was fun. Were any of them really good? Um, who was really good? I don't know their names. It was like an Indian girl and a Middle Eastern guy. And they killed it the first night. The second night, Colin O'Meara and Candice Medina. Um, they weren't part of the tournament, but they just like filled in. Right. Like their roast like filled in time on the show. Um, but they smashed it. They had one of the best roasts that I've ever seen. Like Candice was going so fucking hard. Yeah, she's, there's some good roasters out here. And then the, I skipped the third night. Because I think that was Monday night. I was How a, dare I was you? Then. <laughs> How dare you? That was fun times. We got to go to the Kalela concert on Sunday. 
It's one of the best moments of my life. Yeah, I know. I could tell you. You were out there dropping single tears of joy. <laughs> uh, I got emotional, bro. Bro, you got so emotional. You've had an emotional roller coaster these past couple of weeks. <laughs> a lot of tears have been shed by the Burden <laughs> Game eyes. I've been up and down, man. Jesse crying game out here. I have just, it's, yeah, dude. You gotta let it out sometimes. Oh. I gotta do some spring cleaning emotionally now that it, now that spring has sprung. The spring has been springing. Yeah, dude. I uh, Sunday I went to uh, I went to we we went to play some tennis. Mm-hmm. So we were playing some tennis after again playing some tennis. We went to go get some food at a local establishment. I won't say the name. Okay. And the moment we sat down, from the moment we sat down, this waitress was you know like most waitresses are kind of flirty, right? You don't think anything of mm-hmm. it. But she was like over the top flirty, like really, just super, just throwing it out. There. Were you with a woman? No, no, no. I was with two other dudes. Okay. So Is she flirting with all three of you guys? Was this a, a Twin Peaks? No. <laughs> <laughs> was it a restaurant? It was not a restaurant. Because that's like a bootleg strip club. Like those girls are extra flirty, like leaning over the table. Yeah, she was doing all this stuff, kneeling down. Yeah, she was doing all of this stuff. Okay. And. Yeah, and I was like, all right. So she she was like acting very Hooters ish, like yeah, yeah, behavior. throwing it out, and she was kind of throwing it at what me. What kind of food does this restaurant serve? It's just like classic like American food. I got a burger there. Okay. Um, and like my friend was like, bro, if you don't do this, I'll have to do this on pure principle. <laughs> I was like, all right, everyone, calm down. So, at some point, we ended up getting her number. I think she's like so we're trying to, she's like so you gonna, got the number yeah so she's okay. like you're gonna get my number like she kind of she threw it out for us oh damn was like okay yeah and so she was kind of flirting with us like the whole time or whatever so i get her number is she cute what's up is she was she good looking she was decent it was her last day there ah uh, okay and so she was decent decent enough for this activity anyways right and so she gave us the number i was like oh but like okay. not hot enough that you would plan to get her number but you're just like she's throwing it out so hard i, I like exactly i you might know, as well <laughs> Like, now that I'm off the apps, I'm not going to be scabbing. But, like, anything that's – if you throw it at me, I'm going to pick up what comes to my position. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I'm just I'm just playing the, just playing in my position. If the ball's coming at me, I'm going to catch it. Okay. And so then, yeah, I got her number or whatever. So I was like, oh, what time are you off? She said, blah, 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 yada, yada. I was like, okay, stay up. <laughs> and so, yeah, so we hung out the first night. And she's like – So you met her Sunday – did you yeah. hang out Sunday night? Yeah, so we hung out later on when she got off. Okay. Well. So like I met up with her at the establishment. We had a drink, went to another establishment. Then we went back to her place, and she's like, oh, I have a heart rule. I don't I go with guys on the first date or whatever. Okay. I'm like, all right. Well, fuck. <laughs> so now we got to hang out. She's like, but I'm off the next couple of days. If you want to hang out the next night. So on Monday night, we hung out. Okay. She like came That was through. yesterday? Yeah, that was last night. Yeah. So yeah, she came through. I was like, all right. Done and done. <laughs> <laughs> She's a woman of principles. It's not the first night. Which I respect, you know, but the second night. And I was like, all right, this, it's been close to 24 hours. I'll allow it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, which I get that you're a woman of principles, but at the same time, like, really, what are we doing? I'm like, what are, <laughs> <laughs> why are you wasting this time? She had to feel you out, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I guess, but it's also like, Come on, you got kids. Like, stop, <laughs> stop trying to be cute with this shit. Act you like know? you've been here before. Yeah, this, we know this ain't your first rodeo. Like, we're saying, come on, this, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I feel like like Patrice O'Neill said it best. The difference between and this woman was, I want to say she was like 43 or 44. Okay. And then, uh, like, but she, she's like the only difference between a 40 year old and a 22 year old is how long I'll wait. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it was kind of one of those moments. But I was like, <sighs> you waited a whole day. Yeah, I did wait a whole day. So self control. Yeah, look at look at look at me, self control <laughs> champion out here, self discipline. But yeah, just I don't know. It was just one of those things to do just to do it. Yeah, out of boredom. You didn't feel like waiting in the comedy mothership open mic line Sunday or Monday, <sighs> so you're like, I might as well try to get some pussy while I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fill in some time. Yeah, spent a lot of time. That's on a that. lot more fun. Yeah, you, you did some waiting, but the payoff was uh, a lot more fruitful than my open mic endeavors that I did yeah, like, the last couple of nights. Just partying in the back alley. Yeah, dude, back alley at Kill Tony's lit. If you if you make it down to Austin, Texas, you don't even have to sign up for Kill Tony. I think there were people in the back alley just hanging out, dude. <laughs> it's just now gotten to that place. They didn't even sign up. They're it's, just there. Just it was just a, a party, party back here, dude. I got past so many joints and beers last night in the alleyway. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised. A bunch of people like bringing like lawn chairs and shit, camping out, getting yeah. comfortable. 
Yeah, uh, Charles Adams had a cooler backpack. I'm like, what you got in there? And he's like, books. And I was like, oh, damn. All right. <laughs> I was expecting him to like pull out like margarita mix or something. <laughs> He's got full. He really had books in there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh man. He had this like gigantic like cooler backpack, but uh, yeah, people were fucking hitting the liquor store, grabbing like sixers and twelve packs. And man, next time I come out, there, I'm bringing my paddleboard just to sit on. Yeah, you should <laughs> just bring it. Hang out there, bring my cooler. Yeah, Leo and I might do a podcast in the alleyway, and then some other people were joking about it, and we we're like, all right, we gotta jump on it now and get in there. Uh, Andres wants to get a generator and find like a, a flat blank spot on the wall and get a generator, a projector and hook up his Nintendo switch and run smash brothers tournaments oh, in the alleyway. Shit. And I was like, yo, Paul Cyphers, you need to fucking hustle some comics out here. Make it a real thing now. or just yeah. hustle it in the back alley. I'm yeah, going to get that money. I'm going to bring some dice, bro. We're rolling dice on the wall. Dog. Andres has been rolling dice back <laughs> <laughs> he had three dice in his pocket. They're already rolling dice. <laughs> Dude, Owen Gallivan walked up to me last week. He's like, yo, I just lost all my money on dice. <laughs> and then as I was leaving, Andres is like, yo, I made so much money on dice tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so funny, man. You put, yeah, like, it's the getting first, real degenerate back I'm there. saying, it's like the first weekend, the first like day was just like, What's happening in this back alley? By week three, it's like, yo, this alley is delving into wildness. Yeah, day one, people were selling beers back there. Are fucking, the police still there? Yeah, there's like two cops that stand by the back door. Yeah, where you, the where the comics go in. Yeah, you need that still just to keep yeah. people just to keep people in line. There's like two cops and a couple staff members, and then the Kill Tony staff like comes in and out, announcing who's going up on stage. They got a there. megaphone now. Yeah, they got a megaphone. Yeah, it's making it. <laughs> um, they're running. It's it's running a little smoother as the as it goes on. I watched the first episode, the first mothership episode of Kill Tony on YouTube last night, and Owen Gallivan was one of the first comics to get on Kill Tony. And I watched the episode. They called a woman named Cat Owen B, but the the Kill Tony staff like misheard it. So then they just started yelling like Owen B or something like in the, the alleyway and everyone heard Owen G. So <laughs> <laughs> we were like, Owen G, Owen Gallivan. <laughs> yeah. So then Owen goes out on stage and uh, it was like, he just like goes into his set and they're like, they're like, are you cat Owen B? And he's like, Oh no, I thought they called Owen G. <laughs> and, and Tony's like, all right, we need to like, communicate better like from now on or whatever um so <laughs> owen ended up like lucking up and getting on stage by accident and then he got booked on the secret show from that <laughs> like he had a great set and a great interview <laughs> and got booked <laughs> when he wasn't even supposed to be there uh, <laughs> it'd be working out like that sometimes yeah, you gotta get in where you fit in dog. man that's so fun the one time i went they called like three bends to the stage oh that's right and not two of them started with bees and none of them were me and I've never been so crushed in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I've only been there one other time where they called it Jesse. It was on uh, Halloween last year. And, like, I felt the rush. I was like, let's go. And Tim Dillon was there, and he was there the first time I got called up. I was like, oh, it's meant to be. And they were like, Jesse something something. And I was like, oh, fuck. And everyone, everyone started just, like, punching me in the shoulder and shit. <laughs> I was like, god damn it. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, it's so close, but yet so far. Yeah, I think I kind of like it better in the alley than being cooped up in the what's it called. I like watching the, the show, but like the alley's fun for now. When it gets hot outside, like it already stinks back there. Like oh, it smells like doo doo and trash. Yeah, because people be peeing in the alley and shit and shitting back there. Like people are shitting in the alley. I mean, during the day and, <laughs> and after, before and after the show, it's just an alleyway in, <laughs> on Sixth Street in Austin. So yeah. <laughs> we are overrunning homeless spaces. Yeah, <laughs> like, we're gentrifying <laughs> the alleyways for three hours. Man, so it is what it is. I uh, when I watched the episode, someone like tried to. They were like, "Oh, you know, we're out. like, how's how's a uh, comedy going?" He's like, "Well, I'm in an alleyway," and uh, Tony's like, "Well, yeah, that's where you're supposed to be, right?" He's like, "If you had anything better to do tonight, you wouldn't be in that alleyway." And the guy was like, "Yep, yeah, you're right." <laughs> 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 if you had any other better show to be on, right, you wouldn't be in that alleyway. And he's like, "Yep, that's where my career is." <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a good set at least? Yeah. Oh shit. Um, I forget the guy's name. I'm bad with names, but yeah, no, it's it's definitely interesting. I don't know. I've never really been a big fan like watching the show, but yeah, come hang out in the alley sometimes. I think mm -hmm. 
I got into the bar at Rogan's Club last night, and uh, I'll talk more about that on the Patreon. But the whole time I was like, I'm not supposed to be here. So I like kept it very brief in there. I got in and out, but what it, is, is, it is a nice little cool, cool little chill spot. Why weren't you supposed to be in there? I wasn't on any shows. Oh, was it just people that were on the shows in there? Yeah, it's all the staff and everyone that was on the shows and stuff. Um, Hans Kim brought me in, so like I had a vouch, but everyone was like, "How'd you get in here?" Because <laughs> <laughs> all the people that were on like the shows and stuff, and I was like. I'm not supposed to be here, so I'm going to keep it very brief. <laughs> then I couldn't figure out how to leave the place because they locked the front door. <laughs> You're not from around here, are you? You don't even know how to get out. Some people were like, oh, shit, nice to see you in here. And other people were like, dude, how'd you get in here? Because like, they were barely supposed to be in there. <laughs> they were like, I asked somebody to ask somebody if they could put me on the show tonight, and they got me in. And uh, I was like, yeah, dude, that's like, I don't know. That's how comedy works. Yeah. You got to have it in somewhere. It's all about who you know and who's getting you into what. Who you know and who you blow. And I blew Hans Kim and he got me in last night. Man, yeah. Weinstein ruining the good thing for everybody, man. Yeah, god damn it. Uh, now but I- yeah, Austin Comedy's doing its thing, baby. Yeah. It's, it's getting it's turning up right now. It's about to get hot for the summertime. Whew. I'm not looking forward to that. The yeah. hundred straight degrees of a hundred degree heat. Um yeah, we we went on the paddle boards this weekend in like 85 degree weather. That was nice. Yeah, once it hits like 80, 85, that's perfect. It's over paddle board weather. Once it's like 90, you're just like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, you're out there. But I don't know. I'm going to be in Colombia this summer. Oh, uh, that's right. When do you leave for that? Uh, June 18th. All right, everybody. Starting next month, we're doing uh, Lonely Man's co host auditions. <laughs> yeah, we're going to find out who's going to replace me. Yeah. It's going to have to be... Uh, it's not going to be Paul Cyphers. <laughs> <laughs> you were just with him five minutes ago, and he's not here right now. No, so. no. He's, he'd rather do anything but then be here, which... Yeah. Maybe he'll fill in. We'll see. Yeah, for a couple episodes. Maybe a couple of guest hosts. You know, yeah. just rotate hosts around. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe we'll just stop doing the podcast. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> also a decision. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm gone for... Uh, I'm leaving for Coachella. April 13th through the 24th, so we might have to do some pre-tapes or something. We'll see. Yeah, get some tapes out. I'm going to EDC in May. Ah, uh, that's right. Yeah, so I'll be gone for like a week during that. Hell yeah. From like the 18th to like the 23rd or some shit like that, mm-hmm. which, very excited. Yeah. Uh, EDC is crazy. If uh, comedy doesn't work out, I just we're, we're just going to be festival guys from now on. Yeah, you just show up at the festivals. But I know a lot of festival people just travel around and do festivals year-round. Yeah, just gigging it out. Which isn't the worst way. No. Like, the people I met on the Tech 9 tour, like, that's what they do all year long. They just go tour to tour to tour and pay their bills. But, like, the stage guys make so much money doing that. But you just got to keep those gigs, like, constantly going. Yeah. Once you, I think once you kind of get on the roster, I think, like, my first year on the roster, I only got offered, like, one or two things. Mm -hmm. Then by, like, now, like, year two, I've been offered, like, five or six things. So imagine the next, like, year or so would be, like, oh, seven, eight things, get offered more stuff. Yeah. But I, I hit up my old tour manager because he t- when I worked with him on the Tech Nine tour, he's like, "Yeah, I work Coachella every year." So then I hit him up and I was like, "Yo, you work at Coachella?" He's like, "No, are you?" And I was like, "Yeah." And then he sent me a picture of him and his uh, his wife and and he's like, "Zoom in and tell me if you notice anything." And they're both like completely covered head to toe with tattoos. I'm like, "New tattoo, bro?" <laughs> and, but like obviously they're holding their <laughs> newborn child <laughs> in their arms. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, you got a new tattoo?" Uh, so he's like, yeah, I won't be there. But uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll see some random people out there. I bet you're running into somebody, at least one person, you know. Yeah. I want to meet Pusha T. I saw he's on the lineup. That would be Pusha fun. Pusha T. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that his noise? Yeah. 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 I didn't know you were a Pusha T guy. Not really. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was about to say, it didn't seem like your style of music. Everything is Pusha T. Is that what Kanye West said? <laughs> you used to be close with Pusha T. They had a beef. Did they? they had a yeah. Football. Kanye kind of beef with everybody. Yeah, but Pusha T was also he started the beef with Drake. He uh, uh yeah, yeah, that was that was pretty dirty a few yeah, years ago. He's the one that uh put Drake's child on blast. Yes, and then Drake had to come up with some cheesy lyrics. I wasn't hiding the world from, I wasn't hiding my kid from the world. I was hiding, no, I wasn't hiding the world from my kid. Something like that about hiding his kid from the world instead of. I don't know, something about that. Everyone's like, boo, Drake. I wasn't hiding my kid from the world. I was hiding the world from, from my kid. kid. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Because yeah. he doesn't little, want the world to affect to, his. To child. know that he's a father. Yeah. With a former porn star. Yeah, European porn star? Yeah, she's French. Nice. 
Yes, which I can't say I'm surprised. Like you imagine he's probably it's not the first one that he's fucked. It's probably the only one he got pregnant. Like how? Mm-hmm. Shooting up the club, right? He didn't have this hot sauce on him. Nah. <laughs> there was a guy in line to kill Tony last night who was wearing like a tactical vest and it had like a holder for like his phone and then he just had a bottle of hot sauce <laughs> like in there. Is that for your food? Nah, for these condoms. Nah. Yeah, for these hoes. Yeah, you just got like condoms, hot sauce. <laughs> do you put in the ho- do you put in the hot sauce before or after? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> before, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> You're just in there with some hot sauce. Yeah. Hot sauce. Could you imagine if some the condom broke and it just got in there? Just the hot sauce all in her pussy. <laughs> Oh my god! That I can't imagine that would feel good. No. Oh, uh, I texted my friend Alex. I was like, "Yeah, we're gonna try to be push a teen." He was like, "Ask him about the McDonald's jingle," and I was like, "All right," but I didn't know what he was talking about. I googled it. Do you know who Pusha T wrote the "I'm loving it" jingle? I knew he wrote some jingle for McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. He and Justin Timberlake wrote "I love uh, <laughs> I'm loving it" together, but he didn't get the publishing rights to it. He just got like a one time like writing fee. And they've been using I'm Loving It since 2003. So for 20 years, he hasn't been paid for that song. Uh, yeah, so you got to get some rights. He fumbled the bag on that one. But you know what else he wrote? Arby's. We have the meats. Did he really? <laughs> yeah, and he got like 40% of that. <laughs> he just <laughs> writing jingles? Yeah, I didn't know Pusha T was like the Burt Baccarat of uh, <laughs> the rap game. <laughs> you need a jingle for your fast food coming to Pusha T. Yeah, no, we need a Lonely Man's jingle by Pusha T. Yeah, we need to be a push. When you watch this, because most popular growing podcasts in the world, yeah, come up with a jingle, push. It's like Lonely Man's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it's pretty catchy. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. I'm yeah. Lonely Man. <laughs> I'm Lonely Man. <laughs> <laughs> then we just... We just we should just make our own jingle using push a T jingles. Yeah. <laughs> just mix in a couple. We'll just do a clip speed. Yeah. Lonely man's we have the meats. <laughs> <laughs> Grinding. Grind. <laughs> that beat was that beat might be the all time best pencil tapping beat on a table. Yeah. Like that if is, we're gonna that pe- is like a, a desk beat. It is the quintessential desk beat. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. I, everyone dun, ta, ta, ta. everyone was doing that in like when that song came out. We yeah. Probably in middle school when that song came out. Mm-hmm. Was it like 03? Podcasting. <laughs> Sitting on the couch. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> Get our own push it out here. It is so weird. Like I started noticing like like familiar voices I'll hear on like commercials mm-hmm. and then you realize it's like the same like 10 20 people that do like all of the stuff that like write all the stuff that yeah. just like do all the voice all the shit there's this guy that i like uh his name is matt mahaffey and he has a band called self and he wrote uh expedia.com <laughs> and he got the bag for that one back in the day <coughs> yeah i think he's got a bunch of jingles under his uh on his resume, but that was a big one for him. I think he did a TED Talk just on Expedia.com jingle. <laughs> Look up Matt Mahaffey. That's all it takes. Mm-hmm. It's just like one thing. Yeah. One thing to get the bag. Uh, so we need to figure out a lonely man's bag getting yep. activity. I was talking to Bernard White about like voiceover and acting and stuff like that. And uh, he was like, yeah, you just sign up for this like one website, but you have to pay a subscription to it. But then you get all these gigs like voice acting and commercial gigs. Did he get gigs and stuff from it? Yeah. He makes a ton of money doing that. He does like a, I think he's on, he does voiceover for Fear of the Walking Dead and maybe some other like cartoons and stuff like that. Um, I think he's trying to get like a VO. He wants a VO on like a sitcom that goes into syndication, like that. Is I, yeah, just get that shit. Uh, get that. Uh, what is yeah syndication or, money? Yeah, or like a role on the show that would obviously pay more. I think but. It's a little, probably a little bit more. Yeah, but either way, if that shit gets syndicated, royalty checks forever. And then the VO, he just does it like off of his laptop in his in his house. Yeah, you just need a microphone that you can attach to your computer, and then mm-hmm. you can just record it and cut out all the sounds, and then yeah. We could do that. We got all the equipment for that. Yeah, Maggie Mayfield does that. Oh, yeah. She does the erotic novels. Yeah. yeah we need to get her on the podcast and have ChatGPT write an erotic novel and have her read it. Just have her read an erotic novel on 
We'll start reading. We we can read it. Practice for our voiceovers. Yeah. Let's be like, and then he touched her sex. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they always say it. Yeah. I'm, I saw that. Uh, this is probably this is gonna be like super old news by the time this comes out. I think it's already old news, but there was like a this app called Replica, and it was like it was a chat bot, and then people learned that you could get it to talk like sex to you. You could get the the chat bot to talk spicy to you, but then like people started getting out of control with it, and they like shut down those features, <laughs> and people were like freaking out because their girlfriend was now gone. <laughs> In chat GPT, does that sex you or does it not allow for sexting on chat GPT? No, uh, remember you, we play with chat GPT, it gets all woke on you, like that is inappropriate. <laughs> it's, it's Are like, you sure that, that seems conservative? Yeah, like if it was woke, it'd be like, I also do sex work. <laughs> That'd be the oh, yeah, sex thing. work is real work, yeah. chat GPT. Yeah, sex work, that's the that's the chat GPT needs to decide. Are you woke or not? Chat GPT, figure yeah. it out. Yeah, I guess the girl that created Replica like didn't set out to make like a sex robot, but uh, then they were making like seventy million dollars a month on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd make it a sex robot for seventy mil a month. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude, I'd be making. But then they shut it down. Maybe I think that might be like a premium feature or something like that. <laughs> yeah, now you got to pay extra for the sex thing. Yeah, if you want the girlfriend experience, you know that GFE ain't cheap. Oh, that's that's real sex work right there. Yeah, that's gonna cost you a pretty penny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, prostitute will fuck you for pretty cheap, but if you want the girlfriend experience, <laughs> yeah, it takes a lot more time and effort. Much more time, you know, committed texting back and forth, making you feel special. Yeah. Yeah, that shit don't come free. We should just get jobs running chicks only fans and just sexting dudes all day. Just talking spite. And then just like uh, outsource that to a fucking sex robot. <laughs> yeah. Have Caleb Presley write us a fucking <laughs> chatbot program. <laughs> we'll use... We'll use the replica sex bot program premium yeah. feature to respond to all of these messages. Yeah, like we'll holler at Caleb and be like, yo, we need to get in on this, bro. <laughs> that's a, that's the idea. I'm sure that's already been done. Oh, I guarantee someone's doing it as we speak right yeah. now. I know a bunch of people that like get gig work for like uh video editing or selling stuff or whatever and they just outsource it to like Filipinos. <laughs> and I'm like, one of my friends, he was a recruiter. And he would uh, outsource all of his basic recruiting, like emails and stuff like that, to this dude out in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. He just he's outsourced all of his actual work to someone else. And I'm like, it's a pretty good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And the people like hiring these people are like, uh, they're like, I know that's probably being done. Like the people I'm paying are probably paying other people. But as long as it gets done and it's like to like your specs or whatever. Yeah. No one gives a shit how things get done. Just yeah. that it does get done. Right. And they don't have to do it. They can just pay for it. Mm-hmm. That's that, that's pretty like, much... I'm willing to pay this much money, whatever you do with that money, as long as you get my work done. Yeah, that's pretty much all you're paying for is the convenience and the time factor. I think if you're not using your time to... If you're not using your money to save you time, like, what else are you doing with your money? Mm-hmm. I got to holler at my uncle because uh, he's married to a Filipina woman. And they have a, a ton of family over there. So I should see if anyone knows how to use Adobe Premiere. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, next time you're on the island, can you ask her around? <laughs> Just, yeah, find the tech guy. Who's see got he's... Photoshop skills? <laughs> what, is, what does he charge out there? What is his going rate? Yeah. He just got a bunch of tattoo work done while he was out there, like, super cheap. It was an, an American guy that was, in, like, I think he tattoos in Vegas, but he was in the Philippines visiting his family. But my uncle, my aunt and uncle get like hundreds of dollars of tattoo work done for a fraction of that. And it looked good. Are they like super tatted up? Um, not super tatted. My aunt got like a huge shoulder piece done. Like it's like covering her like whole arm and shoulder. And then my uncle got like, he already had like a rose on his arm from like back in the day. And he got two more roses Aww. on top of that. Or maybe something else. That's cute as shit. And then my aunt, like in her gigantic piece, I think there was a, like a matching rose involved as long as you didn't get tribals <laughs> he's all good filipino no they got pe- tribal <laughs> <laughs> did they <laughs> i think my aunt is like kind of tribal ish oh is she part of a is she from a tribe um possibly yeah i feel like tribals you could do that if you're part of the tribe just getting yeah. a tribal to be just you might as well get a tramp stamp yeah like goodness i don't know what tribe uh worshipped barbed wire but <laughs> <laughs> yeah what, what do you think's more what do you think's worse the the, the tribal tattoo or the tramp stamp Tribal tramp stamp. A lot of tramp stamps were (laughs) 
tribal themed. Also. Oh man, the, the tram stamps with the wings and the flowers. Yeah, or like the butterflies and the live, love, laugh. Uh, this girl we knew back in the day got one. Um, I don't even know if she was 18 yet, or it might have been right around the time. Was, I think as soon as she turned 18, she got a tram stamp. But there was like a tiger in the middle of it, and the tiger's nose looked like a dick. <laughs> <laughs> we just couldn't let her live that day. <laughs> she should have just got it imprinted to actually be a dick. <laughs> Double down. Fuck it. Yeah, tattoos are a weird thing. I don't know when they became like, you don't have any. Now it's like shocking when you meet someone without tattoos. Like people are surprised yeah. when I don't have tattoos. Gen Z is, are still getting tattoos, but they're like millennials get these huge pieces and cover themselves. Now Gen Z is all about like the micro yeah, the little tattoos. small cartoonish tattoos. Just a little heart outline. Yeah, with a little arrow going through it. Or like a like just a small like rose. Or like a cartoon character is like an animal or something like that. Like yeah. Them, like real silly little tattoos, mm-hmm. which I don't know when that became a thing. But Gen Z is also weird. I read somewhere that Gen Z is now experiencing uh, whiskey dick at a much younger age. <laughs> really? Like erectile dysfunction. At like, but they're at, drinking so much less. Well, because apparently it's the porn. It desensitizes them, and now none of them can get erections. That's like the Gen Z thing. Um, oh, so it's not whiskey dick. It's just like they are they got porn brain. Erectile dysfunction. Yeah. Yeah, they got actual ED. Oh, yeah, yeah it's P-I-E-D. Porn, pornography-induced erectile dysfunction. Yeah, that's that's very popular right now. I have a little <laughs> bit of experience with that myself, <laughs> so I could, I could speak to this. Yeah, I, it's I a felt, real thing. I felt it coming. I had to, I had to get out of the porn you game. You didn't feel it coming. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I did not feel it coming. It was <laughs> not why. coming at all. <laughs> that's why you had to get off the porn. I right? had to. I, yeah, I had to get off the porn game, so I've been off that for a while now. Yeah, you get the porn brain. Mark Maron has a joke about porn brain. It's like when you're fucking a girl, and the whole time you're waiting for another dude to come in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like, wait, where's the other guy in this scenario? It's like, yeah, you got porn brain. Yeah, you just... It's, yeah, porn brain, it definitely takes over in terms of like... You can tell when you're watching too much because then you're not even fucking and you're, you have porn brain. You're just like walking in the street with it. You're yeah. just like, oh, I'm walking down the street. Someone's about to come serve me a pizza? Or what mm. are you going to deliver? Or am I just going to walk in here and be like, you, right over there? And yeah. Just bend them over. Like, you just have this weird perception of things then. There's this big stat that just came out, and it was like uh, people like 18 to 30 years old, um, in that age range of 18 to 30, like 60% of men are single, and like 35% of women are single. So that means those women are dating out of that age range. They're dating older guys because yeah. all the guys their age have porn induced erectile dysfunction <laughs> <laughs> and they're broke. Yeah. Minor detail. Yes. Yeah. Because if you have money, you can get through a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Porn, you can't get hard. It's okay. Your money stays hard. You know, right. it's like, but if you're broke and can't get hard, yeah. your prospects not mm-hmm. looking great. So yeah, it's not looking good for the Gen Z, bro. A lot of incels and <laughs> <laughs> More incels in Gen Z than millennials? Yeah. Probably. I mean, I don't know. Not looking good, dude. We'll see what happens. No, we're bouncing back. I feel like, do you ever feel like at some point it's gonna, the trends are going to reverse? Like right now everything's like online. Everyone's just kind of living there. At some point do you think the trend is going to reverse? People are going to be like, you know what? Let's get out of, off the internet into the real world. Mm, no, probably not. <laughs> no, you think it's just gonna I think technology is just gonna <laughs> like take an even like stronger hold on people in our lives, especially as AI advances and like we rely on that. Maybe AI will get us offline, or maybe AI will then now find what porn you like and now create its own porn amalgamation of porn that you like to watch. Oh yeah, the AI generated porn is gonna get absolutely insane because porn advances like all technology. That's why we use. That's why we had VHS, mm-hmm. Blu-ray, um, the str- like streaming platforms got even like better online. Yeah, porn, um, porn, video, that. yeah, video streaming online became much better because of porn. Mm-hmm. So at some point, someone's going to figure out how to get... Uh, yeah, the- porn Porn had that like uh, preview scroll bar mm-hmm. way before YouTube did. Yeah. Like years before. <laughs> they were so far ahead. Yeah. Cause that's where people... Yeah, that's where a lot of the focus goes on to. It's very on the brain. Mm-hmm. I So yeah, I think uh, porn's causing a lot of problems now, but it eventually it will solve all <laughs> <laughs> It'll solve the problem? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> What problems will porn solve? 
Um, what will it solve? You won't. You won't need a girlfriend anymore. You won't need to be in a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> you'll just have advanced porn technology. Yeah. I mean, I guess you'll have the girlfriend experience on Replica, so then you, it'll make all the videos you like. It'll know. Yeah, your you want sex to robot will be powered by Replica AI. <laughs> yeah, that's that's when she's gonna hit the fan. Is when sex robots now can have like a personality and shit. Yeah. Because they already have like the physical part of it down. You know, they mm -hmm. got the flashlights. They got the waist things. Now they're all they're just missing is a talking head, and then it's a rap. Yeah, the uh, the voice technology, and you can choose anyone's voice that you want, <laughs> because all <laughs> you found that Instagram reel saying everyone's vo anyone's voice can be cloned now. Yeah, someone made a an AI video of uh, Joe Rogan and Elon Musk rapping "Gangsters Paradise" or oh, something really? like that. Yeah, just using AI, so they just like they keep using Joe Rogan because Rogan's going to talk about it on his show too. And but he has like yeah thousands and thousands of hours. Hours, yeah. So you can he, because he has so many hours online, you can take all of that and then use that to like recreate his voice. His voice yeah. is easy to do because he has so many hours online. Mm -hmm. So our voices. If are, it wasn't Rogan, they'd probably be doing this with like Howard Stern or somebody. Yeah, probably. There's a lot of well, I guess his stuff's online now. Yeah, but it used to probably not be for a long oh, yeah, time. Rogan's is more accessible. Yeah, for sure. Like I mean, everything Rogan has done started on YouTube and then has just been online this whole time. Does he still release on YouTube anymore? Or no, he puts highlights on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he puts full episodes anymore. No. Yeah, that's what happened. Spotify exclusive sent a, a five year licensing deal with Spotify. Five years, a hundred million for at least a hundred million dollars. <laughs> for what? For what we know, hundred yeah. million plus the ad rev. <coughs> It's ad rev too. Yeah, dude, they <coughs> play like ten ads during his podcast. No, but I thought uh, Spotify got ad rev. I mean, they they're sharing it with with mm, so Rogies. They're probably getting. You a think Rogies ain't taking a piece of that? I mean, a lot of those deals, you just get the money you signed for, and you don't get a lot of other stuff. But I guess maybe Rogies better. At He's reading those ads, so. Yeah. I mean, I'd be intrigued to see what his split on the ads are on top of what he gets paid. Be Before very Spotify, he was making thirty million dollars a year off of his podcast. And not like very little of that was YouTube yeah, ad yeah. revenue. It when was he all was his ad that. reads. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I wonder. Yeah, I wonder what proportion he gets to that now. Because if you probably at least thirty million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, I don't think his money's gone. He's, his podcast has only grown since he moved to Spotify. Yeah. Shout out to St. Rogies. I was hoping to see him in there last. Actually, no, I didn't. I don't want to be around celebrities when I'm in the. In the club, I was, I was saying it's super low key in there, dude. When you're not performing, yeah, yeah, I feel like it's one of those things. Like you, the only time you'd want to meet him is if you're like going on stage, right? Yeah, not, like, I just, I just stayed the fuck out of the way. <laughs> I was like, how do I get out? The whole time I was in there, I was like, how do I leave? How long were you in there for? Maybe like an hour. Oh, okay. So you were in there for a little bit, like, and then I hanging. tried to leave for like twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> just couldn't make it out. <laughs> say goodbye to everybody, and then like got trapped at the front door. There's nothing worse than when you say bye and then you come back and just come back in. No one noticed. <laughs> <laughs> it was dark in there, and no one knew I was there before I left anyway. So no one was no one was looking for me before or after. So that was fine. Or still, no one's st no one's looking for you still. No. Yeah, no one knows. I could, I could be still be wandering the halls in there. No one. Uh, Did you figure out a way to get back in? Uh, yeah. Now I'm like, all right. Now I need to get in here the legit way. <laughs> yeah, walking through the front door. Yeah, being uh, being on some sort of list or lineup. D th that'd be the way. Yeah. So I've heard. I wouldn't know anything about that, but I've heard. Yeah, not being a friend of a friend of a friend. <laughs> I mean, if that gets you on the list. They're like, how'd you get in here? I'm like, uh, through this person, through this person, through this person. They're like, oh, okay. <laughs> I had to do a lot. I was about to say, because I've watched you do comedy. There's no way you made it in on that. Yeah. <laughs> when, You're not getting in here on your own merits. No, I've heard your jokes. You're not. <laughs> that's, no. not that's not happening here. You don't here. deserve this yet. But, sometimes, but do you ever like go to a show and you watch it and you feel like, oh, I could definitely do this? Like when you watch people oh, on their performance. Every show I've ever been to, yeah. Yeah, like I watch the people that they have on the secret shows and some of their lineups. I'm like, all right. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not saying I'm the best comic in the world, but I could do what this person's doing. Yeah. Like a lot, I feel that way. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, I think that's the tricky part is like not letting that get you jaded out here. That's that's the game right yeah. there. Because once that happens, it's like, all right. Um, 
when this podcast comes out, the next week I will be in Palm Springs, California for Coachella, but very close to Los Angeles. If we have any LA listeners, holler at me. I don't know if we do, but we'll find out. Yeah. If you've listened this far, Andrew live in LA. Yes. <laughs> If you're 40 minutes into the podcast and you live in Los Angeles or Palm Springs or somewhere close, hit me up. I have nothing to do for a week. I'm going to go see uh, Jelly, friend of the pod, Christopher Jelly Stanley. Yeah, shout out to him. The weight loss champ. Wait, what did he lose, like 400 pounds? <laughs> like 350? It's close. <sighs> That's hefty. That's a lot. Yeah, what was he? He was 550 and then he was, yeah, below 200. Yeah, so, he was 190 oh, when he was here. Yeah, so 360 pounds. 360 degrees. Just turning that shit turning all the way around. All the way up. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, that's a that's an impressive story, but it also makes me feel like, all right, you got people out there bitching about your weight. Like, it's possible, okay? Calm yeah. down. But, and he uh, did it without Ozempic. <laughs> <laughs> what is Ozempic? It's a diabetes drug, but they found it like suppresses your appetite so now all the celebrities are taking that i thought they just snorted cocaine for that um it's a cocaine alternative <laughs> you want to stay thin you can snort cocaine or do a zenti or shoot i think you have to inject it like every day or like inject a few it times a week yeah into your ass it's an injection uh between your toes and your neck i don't know Man, you're going to look like a junkie before it's all said and done. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, you lost all this weight, but now you just look like a junkie lost, lost all the weight. But it's like one of those things, once you get off it, you just balloon all the way back up again. You're like Your appetite comes back like tenfold, supposedly. Yeah. You could just work out and eat healthy. I heard that works as well. Yeah. <laughs> Intermittent fasting, diet, exercise, too much. Yeah, fuck that, dude. Just yeah. inject me. If people want the shortcut. Yeah, just shoot me up with... Yeah, I would just I'll just stick to the old school ways, you know. I'd just yeah. stick to snorting cocaine like normal people. It was in the news a few months ago because like it is like a drug that like diabetics use, but now there's a shortage on it because everyone's all these celebrities are buying it for weight loss. I think the pharmaceutical companies just they put those articles out just so everyone's like, oh shit, there's a miracle weight loss drug. Yeah, right. Just like the same way that the smoking companies were like smoking kills. Yeah. Oh, what are cigarettes? Gotcha, bitch. I don't believe pharmaceutical companies can ever run out of their drugs. Whenever they're like, oh, there's a shortage on this or that drug. Like, I feel like they're too big to not be just pumping that shit out. Bro, what, what do you think we're, we're protecting the poppy fields in Afghanistan for? What do you think all that poppy's used for? Right. The, the opium. That's yeah. what all these drugs have in common. Yeah. And they bring a lot of it in from over there. But I thought a lot of our drugs were synth synthesized, so that's all in a laboratory. Hmm. Because there's opium and then there's opioids. Opioids are synth uh, synthetic. I th I thought there's like a actual aspect of it that they use in the poppies, like poppy seeds, to build the synthetic version. Um, I don't know. I don't know how science works. There is medical cocaine that they use for like eye like eye surgeries and stuff like that, like that liquid cocaine. Like they're using Coca Cola still. Yeah. So like that's all from like real coca leaves. Yeah, I'm wondering. If, I'm I'm intrigued if uh, oh, do opiates use actual poppy? Opioids. Opioids use yeah. actual poppy. We'll find out. Yeah, the internet knows. It's never told us a lie. No. Um, but we're also protecting it because that's how like Afghanistan makes all of their money over there. Yeah, opioids are a class of drug naturally found in the opium poppy plant. Some prescription opioids are made from the plant directly, and others are made by scientists in labs using the same chemical structure. Yeah, so they're so synthesized. Some of them. So some are, <coughs> some, some are. Some are, but I, <clears throat> I wonder what the percentage is. I'm sure a lot of it's uh, synthesized. Opium poppy is a key source for many narcotics. Including morphine, codeine, and heroin. Ah, okay. So, yeah, but stuff like more, how much opioid is in poppy seeds? Is she feeling for morphine and codeine? Concentration of the range of... Okay, so, I don't know. I feel like we... A good percentage of it is? Yeah, I feel like we, we use, we're using a lot of poppies. Okay. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, like codeine... And like morphine, all those poppy seed bagels. <laughs> also, th th those are synthetic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah we, we don't waste that shit on cheap bagels. It's like wasabi in America. That's not real wasabi. That's just spicy horseradish, bro. <laughs> That's just green horseradish. 
Like those are those aren't real poppy seeds. Those are synthesized. Man, I've, I've those are those are just <laughs> sesame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are just sunflower seeds, dog. They just <laughs> opium sesame. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of my friends, he uh, he works. Uh, his family owns this like Italian joint, and they like uh, like. They they import a bunch of stuff from Italy, mm-hmm. and he went over to like find out about their like their like um, suppliers and stuff that they get from, and it turns out a bunch of um, olive oil just uses like shitty olives for olive oil, like oh, even right. like the premium like supposed to be like pure olive oils used from like rotten olives, like most of it it's like all fucked up. Yeah, if you go to the supermarket, there's there's like it's like a, you're at a bar. There's top shelf olive oil. And then the bottom shelf of olive oil. Yeah, but he said even like most of the top shelf stuff is still made with like shitty olives. It's just put like a label on it. Right. Yeah. And it was just how they do it. I was like, oh, that's how we do everything. We mm-hmm. just make it just a shitty version. Just put a nice little label on it. Premium for them, baby. Yeah. It's like sunglasses all made in the same one. Just the nicer ones have the premium sticker on it. Yeah. I paid way too much money. I have two pairs of sunglasses. One are Ray, real Ray-Bans. And then I have... A ten dollar version, and they look exactly the same. And the ten dollar ones are actually like stronger and have polarized lenses in them. <laughs> <laughs> so, are they do they are they bootleg Ray Bans? They're the same exact shape. Okay. Like if you put them side by side, like you can't really notice. The Ray Bans look a little bit nicer. I think they're a little bit shinier. But uh, the fake ones are like more durable. They like stay on my head better. Like the lenses protect my eyes from the sun better. <laughs> Those are the ones I wear out when we go like paddle boarding and stuff. Yeah, the ten dollar ones. That's all you need. Yeah, because I learned my lesson with the hundred and fifty dollar ones on the boat a couple of years ago. R.I.P. On Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, yeah, you were wild in that weekend. <laughs> yeah, I fucking jumped off a boat after those sunglasses. <laughs> Everyone was like, "What the fuck? Did he just jump off the boat?" Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then homeboy was like, "Oh, don't don't feel bad. I lost my thousand dollar Gucci shades in here last year." I was like, "Well, we're both assholes." <laughs> It doesn't doing? make me feel better. I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna go sunglass diving at the bottom of yeah. the lake. You're like, damn, I'm just as dumb as you. <laughs> <laughs> we're both fucking idiots. Yeah, we're both losing designer frames out here. <laughs> so good. Yeah, especially yeah, you were feeling pretty good that day. I remember because you dropped a lot of end bombs, and I was like, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were taping the Patreon on the boat. <laughs> My bad. You I thought like, I was behind the paywall. Yeah. <laughs> windows weren't rolled up, kid. <laughs> no, <laughs> the windows were no down. windows on the boat. <laughs> I didn't know that our, our homegirl also dropped one until yeah, you brought it up bro, recently. Yeah, you were saying so many N-bombs, everyone thought they could just say <laughs> it. <laughs> I was so many, I said it once. <laughs> you said it, then she said it. I was like, whoa, all right, everyone calm down. Ruined it for everybody. I was like, all right, everyone get the fuck off the N-bomb boat. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> I didn't really jump off the boat. I believe you pushed me off the yeah, boat, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gave me the three hundred kick off the boat. <laughs> this, I said no n words. Yeah, this is <laughs> beef. <laughs> yeah, that was a <laughs> savage day. It's always funny to remind people. Remember that one time you said you dropped that n bomb? Do you remember that? Very funny to remind people about that. <laughs> <laughs> they just the reactions are always like, "What? No!" Then explanations come out of nowhere. Yeah. Just, what it happened was, <laughs> what? yeah. What happened? I'm like, yeah, I, I was there. I remember what happened, but <laughs> it's just funny to see you squirm. Like, yeah, I got a I got a log in my phone notes. I keep it. On May 31st, 2021. <laughs> 5.37 p.m., 42 <laughs> seconds. And I quote. <laughs> uh, you know, you got to have those You gotta have those locked away just in case you need them. I think you were like, I was, you were like, oh, yeah, Jesse's my fella. And I was like, you're my fella too, dog. And like, just everyone was like, damn. Bro, take it easy, fella. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's using it as a term of endearment back to him. I don't like everyone was like eh, I cannot compute is this appropriate <laughs> everyone was just watching let's see how this plays out I'm like, <laughs> yeah I gotta nip this in the bud before we, <laughs> before they took a step back even though there was no space on that boat everyone was able to take a step back <laughs> before it got out of hand and blew up everyone's like fellow 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 like everyone just started saying <laughs> like those birds that mimic each other and, and shit. Then the black girl was like <laughs> <laughs> and the fucking jet ski rolled up and she jumped <laughs> she on the back and got out I'm out of here <laughs> I had a too many, one too many fella drops on here. So Black Dude Rodjeski pulled up. And he was like, "Yep, time to go." Yeah. <laughs> like, sorry, Ben, no room for you. Just, no, you get your white people under control, Ben. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put these honkies on a leash. Yeah, these fucking 
peck of woods out here. I wonder if we'll end up on another boat this year. We should get back on some boats this summer. Yeah, find the hookup. Yeah, find a boat hookup. I need to get some hose. That's the only way fellas can get on the boat is with some hose. If you're on a boat with no hose, also not a great boat trip. Yeah, you got to have a good reishi hoe. That's, it's all about the reishi hose. Yeah, get on the boat. I'll even take the hose that do reishi. I don't care at this point, you know. Very open-minded on the boat. No, if you're in Austin, Texas, and you got a boat, we might have some hose. That's the thing about being a comic is a lot of your friends are broke. A lot yeah. of your friends don't have boat money. Yeah. Like all my other friends are like, yeah, you know, they own a house in this place. and They got this house and they do this. Comics are like, yeah. One of my friends got this funny joke. <laughs> they ain't got shit. No, comics are like, oh, I got one rich friend. Let's all go to his house. And it's like, no, that's not how you do it. <laughs> 87 comics bringing nothing to the table. Yeah, they try to like blow up the, like the one house. And the person that welcomes that in, I don't trust that. No, especially. I'm like, why are you letting so many brokies in the house? Like, <laughs> that's how I felt in the club last night. I was like, I'm a brokey. I shouldn't be in here, dude. <laughs> Get out the club. Yeah, but also, yeah, comics also don't roll with hoes either. So you're not bringing your broke and you're not bringing any hoes. No, Ta- a girl got me into the club last night. and Everyone noticed. They're like, like, how'd you get in here through that girl? I'm like, yep. <laughs> of course, yeah. It's just like. T- you're the oh dude, you talk to girls, bro. Yeah, you're the fucking. That's that's what you're known now. You're gonna be the hoe comic. Maybe I'll take I'll take your your crown. Is, is that what I'm known as now? The hoe comic and hoes. Benny hoes. <laughs> I'm out of the hoe game, bro. I'm just just now. I'm just picking up what comes in my position. That's all. <laughs> that doesn't mean you're out of the hoe game. <laughs> <laughs> you just waited a day to fucking diner waitress. I don't know. You're t- you're still deep in the game. <laughs> <laughs> you put in 24 hours with the. <laughs> Or the hang time. Oh, man. Sorry, former diner waitress. She, it was her last day at work. Yeah, exactly. So She's on a bigger and better things. You know, I'm I'm just very open-minded. I just wanted to let her know that I supported her growth. Yeah. And that's all I was trying to do, just adding a little support in her life. Yeah, you, you guys were celebrating. I, hallelujah. See, you get it. You know, mm-hmm. celebration days. I think more waitresses should celebrate with me. You should. Yeah, so if you're if you're about to end somewhere, let me know. I'll come through. You'll you'll be the Tiger Woods of this comedy this comedy game. <laughs> the Tiger, as long as I don't get beat by with a golf club by some <laughs> crazy <laughs> by, your, by your wife. Yeah. Also, that's another, why you're not tied down. You can fuck as many diner waitresses as you want. You know, gotta have a type. Yeah. But also, I feel yeah. like Tiger Woods just dates crazy women. One beat him with a thing. His other one, he had a trick out of his house. Oh really? Yeah. Apparently, she wouldn't. He didn't was this think a recent story that came? Yeah. Out? So recently, the last woman Tiger Woods was dating, he didn't think that she would leave his house if if he asked her to. Mm-hmm. So he told her they were going on a vacation, and then when they left, he locked her out. <laughs> <laughs> he hit the whoop whoop on the house. <laughs> the fucking metal came up and shit. The garage crates came down. <laughs> but you're not getting back in here. The guard dogs walked out. Yeah. So then apparently she tried to breach uh the nda so she could start disclosing information about him and shit mm. and so apparently though some of those ndas though are pretty ironclad apparently yeah you sign some of these ndas and unless you have a really good reason for getting it out there then it stays locked in as it should nda man I, i'd sign that nda for very little Mm-hmm. And be like Ben, yeah, I'll sign this. I'm not gonna snitch. Pay me. We need to get some NDAs for all the shit we talk before and after the podcast with people. We should do that, like a casting couch signature. Yeah, <laughs> make him show two forms of ID. Yes, on the, on the camera, and then sign this paperwork. Do you consent to this podcast? <laughs> and all the shit we will be talking. You're like, what are you comfortable with? Are you comfortable talking about your sex life, your career, <laughs> <laughs> your family? You get to choose the topics that we can broach. Yeah. How do you feel about these slurs? <laughs> Are you comfortable with Jesse possibly saying the N-word on the podcast? Have you ever dropped one on the podcast? No. No, no. You haven't dropped one where it could be recorded off of... No, not on camera. Yeah, the camera's hard. Even if I had dro- even if I ever did anything illegal on camera, if I ever get asked by by the police, I will deny. Mm. I will deny everything. Go to court and prove some shit. Yeah. I will... Always deny. Kids, if you ever get in trouble for anything, you did not do it. Mm-hmm. They have evidence. You didn't do it. They have witnesses. It wasn't you. Yeah. They have you on camera. That can be anybody. <laughs> like Shaggy said. Best defense ever. <laughs> yeah. It was not me. 
the girl that's that's what the like shaggy and shaggy attorneys at law <laughs> yeah we're going with the was it me defense yeah. <laughs> just, just tell her it wasn't you <laughs> that's the original gaslight yeah. <laughs> she, she got me on camera it wasn't me <laughs> yeah, imagine, shaggy invented gaslight he, he, he did because she, she she caught him everywhere and he was like it wasn't me I, dummy must guess a lie thing. <laughs> I feel like if even if you got caught in real time and you were just calmly denying it, like just it never happened, someone would eventually be like, "Am I crazy? Yeah. Am I like making this up? Like, mm-hmm. did it not happen?" You'd be like, "Yeah, what are you talking about?" Just- I accidentally gaslight people because I have such a bad memory. <laughs> I think I probably like you and I like get arguments all the time. And you're like, "No, I distinctly remember this," and I'm like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> Never. And I'm like, yeah, you were right. <laughs> <laughs> Just gas. Someone else is like, yeah, I was there. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, you were right. You're all right. You got to yeah. double down. That's the thing. Yeah. Just never, never admit it. So it wasn't me. That That's how it is. If I ever do get in a relationship, do you ever lie to like a girl that you date? Sure. <laughs> Why'd you say it like that? I mean, no, no. No. It, never, it wasn't me. <laughs> no, I would never. <laughs> I've never lied in my life. Yeah, bro. It's not a lie if you don't believe it's a lie. I haven't had like a major lie since I cheated in my early 20s. Those were like the big ones. Did you get caught cheating? Um, I admitted to it the first time I cheated and then I learned my lesson after that. Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean you admitted to it? Like were you under pressure or were you just trying to be honest? She was just like, what is going on with you? Because I was just like so like stressed out about it. I was like so like guilt ridden and... Like, I was just, like, acting super weird. <laughs> and she's just like, what is going on with you? And I'm like, I fucked Ashley. <laughs> and then she started swinging on me and punching me. <laughs> As she should. Yeah. And then after that, she learned the lesson now? And then I was like, if you don't want to get punched, don't tell a girl yeah. you cheated on. And also, stop acting stop acting scary, bro. Yeah. This is for going to do it. Be cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like the Fonz. Yeah, just at all times, no matter what. It, you didn't do shit, you were all good. Just yeah. Smile and nod through it. Mm. You gotta treat girls like the police, bro. Um, but otherwise, I'll tell some lies like, oh, yeah, I'm busy tonight. That's a good one. Yeah, classic one. Yeah. Whenever I don't want to hang out with a girl, I'm doing a show. Right. Yeah, just, yeah, we've been doing a show. It's, it's in, it's in Round Rock. It's yeah. It's so deep. You don't, it's, we're going to be there all night. Yeah, it's going to suck. You don't, yeah, you don't want to fuck. Yeah, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to be in and out, so I'm not really hanging. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely, <laughs> we can't, we can't give all our game away. <laughs> luckily, we're 50, luckily, we're 57 minutes into the podcast. If you hear this, uh, if you've reached, listened to this far, uh, message me game. Just giving the game away or anything about the game. Or the uh, the big eyeballs sideways emoji. Yes. Side eyeballs or side eyes also work. Yeah. It gets it. And you'll get a special you'll get you'll get some 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 Venmo in your way. Really? Yeah, why not? Remember when we used to do that when we were doing the Zoom podcast? We're like, if you've listened this far, DM us and we will send you five dollars. No one ever did it. No, not one time. <laughs> yeah, we might even send ten this time if you listen yeah. and got this far. That did if you go back and find one of those episodes, timestamp it and DM it to us, maybe I'll send you five bucks for that. We'll see. If anyone puts in the work. Yeah, we'll double down on it. Go back deep into the lonely man's vault. <laughs> you gotta go. Go, go go back like 120 something episodes. You might be able to find it. Yeah, what is this episode? 150? 140 something? Two? Hell yeah. I maybe. never know when these drop. I just, one day they're just there. Yeah, we're like Drake albums, dude. They just pop up in your feed one day. <laughs> yeah, we we leave our <laughs> we treat the podcast like Jay Electronica treats albums. We just yeah. pop in, pop out. We never say anything about them. Every ten years, and everyone's like, "Whoa, this guy's got nice. This is about to be great." Mm-hmm. And that's how we like it, you know. We don't do this for them. We do this for us right here. This is a vanity project, yeah. And if you want to know when we name names and tell the true stories of what really went and happened. Patreon.com slash lonely man slash lonely mans. Yeah. Five dollars a month. I think there's some spicy content on there right now. There's some very spicy contents on there. Yeah, more to come. Names will be named. Yeah, you might careers even, will be ruined. You <laughs> might even come when you listen to it. It gets very spicy. Hella it's, spice. Yeah. You tell stories. We tell names. We tell what really went down. It's like true Hollywood stories. Yeah. But are we out of the whole game? Are we deep off in the whole game? Or are we so out of the whole game that we're fully yeah. circular back in it. Did I really meet Joe Rogan at the club last night? All of these and Did more. I have sex with Joe Rogan at the club? 
<laughs> Find out. Yeah, did you get your girl swooped by a famous comedian? Find out. Who knows? Yeah. You can know. Yeah. You check out the Patreon. Yeah. Did Bill Cosby steal my girl at the comedy <laughs> mothership? <laughs> Does she remember? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't him. <laughs> it wasn't me. This was Bill Cosby did use the shaggy defense. <laughs> wasn't me. Bill Cosby out of prison, stutting out of prison, is probably one of the wildest things I've ever seen. Have you seen that video of him leaving the jail? No. He was he was stunting on him, swagging out, walking like he was George Jefferson out of the jail. Yeah. I was like, man, did not even phase him. It's like when Michael Jackson got on top of the car. <laughs> Do you don't remember that? No. Outside of the courthouse, like yeah, like he was in the fucking one of his music videos. <laughs> he just got jumped on top of the car. And I think he hit him with a hee hee. <laughs> I gotta find that shit. Michael Jackson Jackson on top of the car. Courthouse. That is hilarious. Hit him with a hee hee hee. Yeah. On top of the car. Bill Cosby did a hey hey hey, <laughs> but that was like during the trial. That was the <laughs> wildest shit. And then he walked out. He's like ah, he <laughs> comes done. Yeah, he was like Kaiser Soze. He was like pretending that he was blind the whole time. And <laughs> he's he's just... all like limping and shit with a walker. He gets out. He's crip walking. Yeah. Like, God damn, Bill. All right. Oh, shit, man. It's been real, y'all. Yeah. Lonely Man's Podcast. We out. Bye. Peace.